Portable TV, come watch with me. If it enters a restricted zone, it will be handled under the rules. If we need to open fire, we open fire. That's the message from Taiwan's head of Ocean Affairs Council when asked about the potential of a Chinese drone flying into their territorial waters. So far, though Beijing has conducted almost daily flyovers of the region, no aircraft have entered restricted space of the semi-autonomous Taiwan, which extends six kilometers off the coast. But the island of interest here is a tiny strip of land where no civilians live that gets frequent visits from scientists conducting research called Pratas. It's the closest piece of real estate Taiwan has to Hong Kong. And numerous other countries are laying competing claims for other tiny islands in the South China Sea, where the U.S. has been known to conduct naval drills with allies. So joining us to explain the ongoing tensions in that region is Surab Gupta. He's a senior Asia-Pacific international relations policy expert at the Institute for China-America Studies. Uh, our friend Surab, thank you for joining us today. Um, the USS Teddy Roosevelt, uh, the carrier strike group, just completed exercises with Malaysia's Air Force uh, while the USS John McCain destroyer sailed through the Taiwan Strait. Why does the U.S. conduct such exercises there? And how do you think China viewed this exercise? The, the reason the U.S. conducts these exercises and navigates these waters is primarily to mark its presence, to reassure allies, and to deter any adventurous moves that might come from the Chinese side. Uh, this, is per, this is the reason the U.S. is there and will stay out there. Uh, obviously, China doesn't enjoy this, doesn't like this. This is very close to its territorial waters. Uh, but at the end of the day, what really irritates China is when U.S. conducts freedom of navigation operations within what China claims to be its territorial seas, because China demands that there be prior notification for entering these waters, while U.S. has a different interpretation of the law. So that is where the fundamental tension lies. It's more a legal tension, actually. Hmm. So why does China then conduct so many flyovers near Taiwan? Is this saber rattling of sorts? There is an element of saber rattling, uh, but I think the more important reasons are, of course, it considers Taiwan as part of its territory, uh, which it does not have control over. It wants to have control over that territory. And we must understand uh, that most of these flyovers, not this drone one, which incident people talked about, but the most of the flyovers happen at the southern edge of Taiwan's air defense identification zone, because that part, that southern edge fundamentally is very, very strategic maritime, uh, very strategic uh, airspace uh, in, the co in the context of a, a Taiwan contingency. And that's where the Spratus Island comes in, because there is this narrow straits between the Philippines and Taiwan, and those narrow straits will assume enormous importance if there's a Taiwan contingency and if there's the need for an embargo of the island. Interesting. Uh, well, China, we know now, has dispatched a uh, battle group to the region in response to these drills. Could this be Xi Jinping testing Joe Biden to see his tolerance? So, but up to a point, you know, China has been basically circumlocuting the island with its carrier battle group, and it has brought more and more assets so as to do contingency relevant military exercises. But fundamentally, why we are seeing this tension rise and has risen for some time is because within this past 12 months and continuing with the Joe Biden administration, the U.S. has done has taken fairly robust pro-Taiwan stances, which have angered China. There's been a huge arms sales decision, the largest arms sales since 1992. There was recently a memorandum of understanding between the Taiwan Coast Guard and the U.S. Coast Guard on cooperative activities. They've been, the State Department is going to have an elevated level of contacts with people at the Taiwan, at the Taiwanese end. All this angers China and sees that the one China policy 
or the one China principle that it says enunciates is being placed under jeopardy. And so what China is trying to do is send a message of deterrence don't do those things. Don't mainstream Taiwan into your strategies because then we will have a hot conflict and that will not be good for anybody. So it's a message yeah. of deterrence more than anything hmm. else. Well, can you help us, uh, Surab, better understand this delicate freedom that Taiwan and Hong Kong both enjoy? Um, as you mentioned, they are not independent from China, yet they are allowed to have their own militaries and even broker their own arms deals with countries like the U.S. Can you explain this delicate balance? Yeah, one must understand that Taiwan is the renegade province of China, so insofar as China is concerned. Uh, with regard to Hong Kong, it has effective control over Hong Kong. And so in the context of one country, two, two systems, while it has control over Hong Kong's national security, it doesn't feel the need to, to project force out there, though it does have the capability to do so. With regard to Taiwan, now Taiwan is the renegade island, and the main problem out here arises from the U.S. support which comes for Taiwan, which is premised on that China and Taiwan both belong to one country, to one China, but that the U.S.'s formal position is, but we don't have a position. We don't know for sure if Taiwan belongs to China or no. That's the legal position. And so then that allows the United States to arm Taiwan hmm. because it doesn't take a position if Taiwan formally belongs to China or not, even though there is one China. And that is then the basis for a renegade province to find means to defend itself and the U.S. is willing to arm its. And so this is where this distinction arises. Wow, very interesting. Good to learn uh, this history, Surab, in such a succinct manner, because like you said, it's, it's very important to understand the distinction of one China, but also a little bit of the renegade state uh, that Taiwan uh, is apparently at least recognized by the United States. Uh, Surab Gupta, always appreciate your expertise. Thank you so much for joining us, my friend. You're most welcome, most welcome, most welcome.